As if this season couldn't get stranger, just an hour before the game, it was announced that the NBA has launched an investigation into prop betting irregularities around Raptors big man Jonte Porter. Reportedly, this is around two games, one in January when Porter left a game against the Clippers after aggravating an eye injury, and another in March when he left the game early due to an illness. While we wait to see the results of the investigation, both Darko Ryakovich and Garrett Temple were asked about this post game. Surprised. Um, you know, but at the end of the day, nothing's been proven yet, so it's an investigation. And, uh, you know, he's a member of our, our team, a member of our uh, organization, but also a member of the 450. So, in our position, and, uh, you know, we're back in. And uh, hope, hope. You know, it's, it's not what is uh, implied. Um, became aware of that uh, today, pretty much like anybody else, and um, uh, caught me off the guard. But uh, at this point, I really don't have any comment on that. For my perspective as a coach of the team, I never uh, doubt uh, injuries. I never doubt, you know, honesty from players. Obviously, I never had a situation like, like this before, and, uh, you know, so I did not. The whirlwind season for the Raptors just continues tonight. A loss to the Nets gives them their 11th straight, the longest active losing streak in the league, and the sixth longest in franchise history. Between the investigations, the lawsuits, the trades, the blood clots, the injuries, the players away from the team for personal reasons, anything that could happen to the Raptors this season did. The game itself was a bit lifeless. The Raptors competed against a Nets team that is about as down in the mud as they are right now, but in the fourth quarter, Brooklyn's veterans just executed better and pulled out the win. We could just keep building, honestly. Um, I feel like the, uh, us younger guys out there could just keep building and working um, with each other each and every day. And by the time either uh, in the next year or beginning of the next year, uh, we'll be fine. Now, in tonight's film room, I want to highlight Ochai Abaji and why he has the necessary skill set to eventually be a good rotation player for this Raptors team sooner than you think. Ochai Abaji has a couple of skills that are already really translatable in the NBA. He's a great off-ball mover and cutter, can finish in and around the basket, and I think his ability to move off of the ball is going to come in handy when he plays with better talent around him. Uh, defensively, he's able to play bigger and guard up more often. Uh, he's very timely on his blocks and his steals, which makes him intriguing as a weak side rim protector type, although he's a bit undersized. And so you can see the skill set that could translate to a very good team eventually. But... This is how he's doing it right now. The off-ball movement is where Ochai is getting his bread and butter buckets. This time he cuts to the basket, 45 cut, catches the Kelly Olynyk pass, and finishes through. This time you're seeing his activity in general. Screen, and then flash middle, able to finish through the contact over Dayron Sharp. Really, really like that activity. And it sort of reminds me of something that Bruce Brown was really elite at, especially when he was at his height, you know, in Brooklyn and Denver. And defensively, like I said, he's good at getting big. So he switches this pick and roll, is able to front Nick Claxton, and gets the steal over top. And he has an incredible knack for chasing down these blocks in transition, and also has shown that ability in half-court settings as well. But the main swing skill for Ochai to be a consistent rotation player in this league is his ability to hit shots. And these are just catch-and-shoot shots that he needs to get more consistent at, just relocating into space, whether it be moving off of a screen, being able to shoot these shots will make him that rotation player. And the reason I brought up Bruce Brown earlier, because I think that's a pretty viable pathway for Ochai to be a very, very good rotation player in this league. I know for Raptors fans, Bruce Brown sort of has a sour taste in your mouth right now because he's not playing his best basketball. Uh, he just hasn't good look, looked good in a Raptors uniform whatsoever. But for about three or four seasons, he was a really, really good rotation player. For the Nets, for the Nuggets, you know, obviously won a championship, was an integral cog to that Nuggets championship as well. The reason was because he was one of the best paint finishers at his position. At, despite being just six foot four or six foot five, he played bigger, was able to guard bigger and finish around the basket among some of the best in the league. I, I remember there was a time where, you know, Bruce Brown was hitting 70% of his shots around the basket. Um, Ochai because of his ability to cut off of the ball, move without the ball, his obvious athleticism, 
it kind of lends to that archetype a little bit more. And I think the reason Bruce Brown became really successful was because he finally started hitting his shots. He was a 40% three-point shooter in Denver, and that was the year in which he became really his fully actualized self. He hasn't been able to capture that. He wasn't like that in Indiana for the most part and hasn't been able to do that with the Raptors. But ultimately, I do think that's a pathway for Ochai to be successful. This off-ball roamer, you know, sort of this young, um, I guess, smaller version of like a P.J. Tucker-esque, but you got to be able to hit your shots. And obviously, that's going to be the swing skill set that will determine if Ochai can be a really, really good rotation player. But he has some of the ancillary things. And when we talk about ancillary, right, Grady Dick, just as an example, a very small example, at the very start of the season, the very start of his rookie year, he was doing the little things right, right? Making the pass, good defensive rotation there, making that nice like hard cut or whatever for the layup, right? He was doing the little things, but the main skill set, the shot wasn't falling. The shot falls now, and now it's opening up different levels of his game. I think the same could apply for Ochai when he starts hitting his shots. Now, for what it's worth, he's not Grady Dick, and Grady was a really, really talented shooter in college as was Ochai. Um, And so you hope that he can somehow rekindle that, find that some way, some way, shape, or form. But I'm, I'm, I see the promise in a guy like Ochai. And I know it's hard to really take away too much from games like this, but my job, I guess, as a person who watches this stuff is to sort of try to contextualize it and figure out how it would look in a better situation. And I can sort of imagine... Ochai playing off of Scotty, Ochai playing off of Jakob, playing off of RJ and quickly moving in space, cutting into, you know, openings, floaters, finishes right to the basket. Just reminding me a lot of what Bruce Brown similarly did with that Nets team. And I just, I think there's a world in which that works. Now, for what it's worth, Bruce, you know, Bruce bought into that role. Ochai also needs to buy into that role. So we'll see what that, if that happens. Um, that being said, Pretty crazy day for the Toronto Raptors. The loss is somewhat secondary to everything that happened with the Jante Porter stuff and the betting and everything along the lines of that. Look, I'm not going to get too much into it because we just don't have all of the information. For what it's worth, I think the report was sort of lacking in information. Like, yes, there was the bet. There was the day in which they are alleging that Jante sort of bet on himself (laughs) for, for a lack of better terms. And... You know, there was this sports book kind of, I guess, reference or research that says that, you know, Jante, the winners of Jante were the biggest of that night. And so I I just I think it's a pretty crazy story. I think it just shows you some of the obvious issues with incorporating gambling so much into the, the news cycle and NBA stuff and all that stuff and the NBA incorporating it into their own app and whatnot. And so we're seeing some of those pitfalls here. Ultimately, we'll see what the investigation happens. I don't want to make him guilty before innocent and whatnot. We'll see what the investigation ends up happening and how that transpires. But it was a crazy day, y'all. It was a wild, wild day for your Toronto Raptors. Uh, And it's been a wild, wild season. I mean, genuinely, an incredibly roller coaster type of season for the Raptors. You think about everything that happened with the Raptors this season. And I mean everything, right? The trades, Christian Coloco, the, you know, the injuries, the moving away for personal reasons from the team. And, you know, obviously, if you even go back further than that, the Fred Van Vliet leaving and Nick Nurse getting let go. And like, it's just been such a whirlwind for the last 12 months. It just feels like anytime there's some sort of stable ground that ground gets yanked from under the Toronto Raptors, you know? Even those three games after the All-Star break, it's like, oh, this team is fun again, pizza party, and yank Scotty injury, right? And it's just been like that for so long for this Raptors team that you hope that they can build some sort of foundation moving forward uh, and to next year because that's what everybody's supposed to be looking for with this Raptors team. This year is a bit of a wash, folks. Um, Not that many games left, though for the Toronto Raptors and, you know, for your boy, when it comes to the recaps, thank you so much for tuning in, subscribe to the Raptors Republic channel as always. Uh, you know, they obviously do do extremely great work and, you know, I try to do a little dabble here and there too. You know what I mean? And 
yeah, that's about it, guys. Hope y'all have a great day. Hope y'all are spending your time with your loved ones instead of watching these Raptors games because they've been ugly. And I will watch them instead for you. Recap them, and you guys can watch the recaps instead in the morning. Thank you so much for taking part in this whole thing. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.